Good morning, class, and welcome back to the Nerd Academy Podcast. Hosted by our headmaster, Jared Bachman Stubbs. You can find all of us here at the Nerd Academy Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on our website, www.thenerdacademypodcast.com. Our shows, The Nerd Academy Podcast, Knights of the Nerd Republic, and Campus Life are released weekly at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget, check out our Patreon where every donation helps to keep the lights on. Hello there and welcome back to Knights of the Nerd Republic. I am your host, Jared the Dark Jedi Bachman Stubbs. And we have a fun show for you guys this week. We have Joel the Sentinel Basin back on the horn. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. We have the lore keeper, Connor Chiquiti. What's up, everyone? Hope everyone's having a wizard week. And can't wait for you all to see what we have in store for today. And we have... Oh, God. That shit-eating grin because he knows it's coming. We have your favorite manic Sith Lord, Darth Id... Ha, ha, ha. Hoo, hoo, ha. He, he, ha. He, he, ha. I thought my jokes were bad. Wrong show. Wrong show. <laughs> that, that reference is better suited on the Nerd Academy. I am upset with you. Uh, we don't have the birthday boy on this week. However, it is Spence the Mando's birthday, and you guys will be hearing a pre-recorded message from him uh, later on to go along with our topic. But... Uh, black leader, Travis Grossman and I, we are men of our word. And we said earlier this week on the Nerd Academy that you guys would be getting to hear from our new professor. We have a new voice on the show. Uh, we're going to see if we don't scare her away with our fuckery, uh, and see how that goes. I am pleased to introduce you all to Alexis, the consular Capel. <laughs> I didn't know you came up with the name already, but that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> well, she, I mean, she can kind of, I mean, you can kind of come up with it if you want. I mean, no, I think that's fine. All, all right. right. Jared almost gave me the Admiral, but I chose my name. We'll test it out for now. I mean, yeah, yeah, that, that yeah, that's not a hard and fast thing. Y'all, y'all can play with that as you like. I was, yeah, I was going to go with the Admiral because he's the resident. Uh, post Return of the Jedi the Legends guy and then like he's super okay. aggressively was like no 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 I need to be Darth Id Darth <laughs> Id and I was like I'm uh, sold I'm he sold by his convictions he stood by it he committed to the bit uh, and Thank here we are it. <laughs> consular it's good that's good yeah I like it I think I do like it that was good to hear because that was that, that was I was I was hoping you would uh <laughs> getting getting right into it live on air you know you you, you gotta you just gotta let the let it flow let it go i was gonna ask you beforehand so uh what are you gonna introduce me as but i waited to see if you <laughs> came up with it and you did so this is a consular ship where is the ambassador <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we have uh, only one new story for you guys this week, and then we are doing a topic episode, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun, the little idea we have for you. Um, so we're going to jump in to the news so that we can get to the meat of the episode very quickly. More than new. Uh, so we had some breaking news, some more casting news for season two of The Mandalorian. Um, because it is the show that is going to have literally every character in the expanded universe in it at this rate. Uh, I want to make sure I pronounce the gentleman's name right. Uh, we have Timothy Ol Oliphant? 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 I have Oliphant. no idea. Oliphant. Probably Oliphant. from like Lord of the Rings. Oliphant. Thank Probably you. Oliphant. Timothy Oliphant. But I, I really Oliphant. don't know. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Uh, but yeah, so we got breaking news that he would be cast in season two of The Mandalorian. Uh, which everybody kind of laughed at because it fits. Uh, he kind of has a track record of being typecast as sheriffs. So, surprise, surprise, we we're you know casting the sheriff guy in the space western, and then his name slash... is Cobb. Oh well, yeah, exactly. That's what we're getting at here. Uh, Corn on the cob. And uh, slash film broke a scoop that apparently uh, Oliphant would be donning Boba Fett's armor 
in this season of The Mandalorian. <laughs> so, we already what know... What this guy look like? We already know that Timor Morrison is coming back to play, at the very least, Boba Fett and maybe Captain Rex. We'll see how that pans out uh, with those rumors. However, if Boba Fett's already back, and we have Timor Morrison reprising a Fett, the idea that Oliphant is going to be wearing the armor... Uh, and I'm going to kind of pitch this to Mike and Connor because they've both read Aftermath and they're more familiar with this character than I. The odds <laughs> are... There's not much to talk about. I, I know, yeah, but just, you know, I, I know when I'm talking about something I've only Googled and not read. Yeah, Connor's, Connor's super on board with Cod Vant. Uh, we're, we're getting... The, uh, what's his last name? Vanth? There's nothing... Oh, he only appeared Vanth. once. Once, like, on a two-page side note. Like... Anyway, continue. Sorry. So, so g- give us the rundown on Cobb Vanth. Cobb. All right, so. Is, or, okay, Connor, you. Yeah. Okay, so Cobb Vanth, he's a sheriff. He is a he's the sheriff of Freetown, which which is a settlement, and it was formerly the settlement of I want to pronounce this right. Um. Uh, I can't find it. I can't find it. He was sheriff. Uh, had man had Boba Fett's armor. He got Boba Fett's armor from a bunch of Jawa traders in four ABY, and um, just basically brought law and order to this desolate town, planet in this desolate time of the galaxy. So. So, not counting Thrawn, because that was, you know, that like, like the Thrawn is a very, that's a very complicated situation from him being a Legends character brought in, re-canonized in a cartoon. This would be the first time that we're seeing a character who has only been depicted in the novels brought that, yeah. onto the screen, which is a pretty big deal. You know, like that, like that, yeah. that's awesome. I, it's right up there with to... Saw in uh, yeah. Rogue One. Another interesting part of this guy is that he, I, I forgot this, I'm rereading the Wikipedia article, he has in his, like, keeping, his possession, this young hut named Borgo, so he's probably going to try to use that, this hut as, like, leverage against the huts so, like, they don't cause, like, slave problems. And he, and that's all right. He, he also, like, defended this town from people called the Red Key Raiders. Um, and he also, he hung out with Malakali, who was the big uh, fat guy with the black... Like Arabic shawl thing. Of the Rancor. The, yeah, the Rancor Keeper. Keeper. Yeah. yeah. And he, yeah, the, so. Cobb, yeah, Cobb is a, you know, he's like, yeah, you're a new sheriff in town. You know, he's probably going to have a big old side chaw. I just hope he doesn't get any of that chaw, like, on the armor. You know, that'd make me mad. I don't want that. You know? Mm-hmm. Put, putting in a space dip uh, before getting into a yeah. blaster fight. Yep. Yeah I, yeah, I don't want that. Probably be chef sticks. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd rather, spice. yeah, I'd rather see some like chef sticks on air. Than, yeah. yeah, yeah. Space spice, man. Yeah, yeah. Going on a nice little spice bender after work. You know, it's a hard day yep. of wrangling Jawas and Tuscan Raiders. Just have like a nice yep. little pile of spice actually, just lay Tuscan, into it. Actually, as you do, as you do. Yes, as one with does. Tuscan Raiders. He struck a deal with them to protect Freetown by giving them water and a pearl from a crate dragon's belly. That's not And they bad. sort of respected that and sort of regarded Freetown as sort of sacred, which is kind of cool, and also sort of ties into that notion of Tuscan Raiders being like more civilized than we usually think of them. And which that's I really love. Yeah. Humanizing, humanizing the Tuscan Raiders is probably one of the coolest things that you can do. That's an interesting thought. I never. I yeah, literally just because... thought of a story that I can that I can say on this episode. Yeah, and again, that brings us back to the hashtag we're trying to get started. Hashtag cancel Padme Amidala. Uh, Padme Amidala <laughs> is over party. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is <laughs> <laughs> animals. No. So like pa- Padme's canceled because like she was kind of turned on by Anakin murdering all those Tuscans. Like uh, yeah, she, she, she she's kind of part of the it. she's kind of part of the problem. You know, she she didn't yeah, care. She, she didn't she, care. I want to, I want she to, it, yeah, I want to hear this. Did they ever have an argument about that? Do you think, like nope. the two of them, like in bed, like Annie, you, you're a you're a you you're, you're a genocidal dude. You know, that like, that would be some fun ass pillow no, talk. Not. That would be some. Be. 
<laughs> that would be some fun ass pillow talk to watch. Just, just like what? what you said. Just like, you know, you can get a little genocidal sometimes. Just, what do you it's mean? Sort of therapy. <laughs> Maybe. He would literally say, like, that's the way it's supposed to be. Like, one of those pre Vader moments. Like, that was one of the redeeming qualities of the prequels, I think, that kind of show, and you know, it shows that Vader didn't just come out of nowhere, that, like, he, Anakin always had sort of, like, authoritarian tendencies, I guess. Maybe, you know. Yeah. And it's just sort of disturbing. The boy was born a slave, so in some ways he only knew power and the lack of it. It's kind of tragic. Oh, it's, it's incredibly tragic. I think one of the... One of the downfalls of the prequels, and in my opinion, uh, the way Anakin was written in Legends, is that, like... Yeah. You kind of have the issue where so much of the material wanted to build up like the precursor to Vader that they neglected to make him a real person. So the fall in legends for me wasn't quite as tragic, but thanks to the clone wars and a lot of other now canon material, like you see those moments where you see that terrifying rage monster pop out of him. But yeah, like with, uh, um, our buddy, the spider, like that you encountered, today yeah right? oh, i don't want to talk about like, that spider i don't want to talk about the dummy thick spider that tried to kill me today um god that's hilarious but, but there was but yeah uh sorry. admiral trench yeah like when he when he whacked trench that was a that was a vader moment he was when he when he whacked trench like three times yeah all three times he's killed what? admiral trench <laughs> yeah dude admiral trench did not die until literally season seven but yeah i just i think that in the canon, he thought he died at Ryloth. No, no, no. Admiral Trench won't die. He's like an actual spider. You can't kill that son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if he shows up in post in the post Rise of Skywalker universe. I'm still alive, bitches. <laughs> I would love that, honestly. I would, I would fight for I the would rebe- rebellion now. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we are gonna transition over to our topic this week. Uh, This is something I've been wanting to play around with and kind of get into the weeds with for a hot minute. Um, We have all kind of taken some time to think about if we had the opportunity to greenlight any Star Wars project, what stories would we want to see told? And we're going to go around the horn a couple times and, you know, see what everybody has to say. Uh, I have a couple prepared. Um... I know pretty much everybody else does as well. Uh, Connor, I'm going to pitch to you first. Like, g- Give me your elevator pitch. I am Kathleen Kennedy. Give me your elevator pitch. <laughs> Never mind. I don't know if Connor is talking and I can't hear him because he's lagging or if he's just uncomfortably uh, imagining uh, I'm me just, as I'm Kathleen Kennedy. I'm trying to Kennedy. think of how to say this. Now that you said it's an elevator pitch... And those I suck at. No, no, no. Just, just, just give me your, give, give me your best. Why? What, what is Holdo doing on your screen right now? So, with the way this, set, with the way this, I'd say, I'd say probably one of my other. I have four, like projects that I'd greenlight. One of which is already <laughs> pretty, pretty much been greenlighted, but like we just don't know about it yet. Um. But the one I thought of, and it was o- it only came to me after rewatching Rise of Skywalker today with my friend, um, because he's such a Sith fanboy, is like sort of a story that delves into the origins of the Sith. Okay. Like, Exegol is a fantastic jumping off point to for us to find out how it got to the state that it did. The, the sort of mythological horror state that we did in episode nine will also expand in the Sith lore, uh, rule of two, figuring out how Palpatine sort of bastardized that with the, with like the, all, I am all the Sith. Um, Dude, I really Pal- like that idea. Like it's literally Palpatine. He's going to bastardize something to make, to make, to meet his own ends. I truly think he did. It just hasn't been written yet. Like, it's just, this this stuff's there. The rule of two is there, and then Palpatine was like, you know what, I'm going to make this the rule of one. We're going to make it the rule of two, but I'm going to make it the rule of one, because I'm the best, and that's all I know. So, like, 
just the origins of the Sith and their philosophy. How did they come to power? What happened? And then another story would be the origins of the Force. Dude, give me that wellspring of life, baby. Dude, give me all of that. Keep it mystical, keep it spiritual. Wait, wait, what were you saying, Joel? Go ahead. Uh, Make it, like, something we haven't seen as in, like, a whole movie from the perspective of the Sith. Like, a whole series just from, like, no good. Like, make the Sith the good guy kind of viewpoint. You know what I mean? Like, give it the dedication that you would good, you would the good side. Basically the Bane trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, you know, all from the eyes of a Sith Lord. Now, how much, Connor, th- this is this is a question I, I'm really excited to ask with a lot of these. Now, are you just trying to, like, are, are you just going to, ad- with this idea, are you just going to adapt Legends? Or is it, like, clean slate, new characters, new ideas? Are we going full steam ahead? Are we hopping back? Middle of the, gra- middle of the, middle of the path. Balance. Okay, okay. What stories has always been about is balance. Uh, I know balance is more removal of the dark side with the, and the light of the force is the natural state of things. But take what I can, see how it works in the story, but utilize hmm. new stuff if possible. Hey, what was that post on Twitter that I saw about what you just said? It's like, when uh, George Lucas goes out and says, the "Balance of the Force is the complete removal of the dark side," and then and yeah. then and then you just just see below, it's like all Star hardcore Star Wars fans. I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see that. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely, because it's more fun for like Revan is the balance because he's dark side and light side, and I don't have to choose a team. Yeah, I mean that's this Ray too, I'd say, but like to go. But just like I would go middle, I would probably go middle of the road. I wouldn't do a one to one adaptation because okay. a one to one adaptation would pro- was pose the problem of like if I don't do it exact like it poses two problems. If I don't do it as exactly like it's written in the book, there's going to be people that are going to be sad and disappointed. But if I don't do anything new, they're also still going to be disappointed because of that. So I need to strike that middle ground, but also tell. An organic story that needs to work within the universe that fits. But also, like, it's sort of origin. You we talk about the Sith, how they originated, what their philosophy is, how the rules who happened, how Palpatine basically bastardized everything for his own self-serving Machiave- Machiavellian ends. And boom. Easy. We could MCU it. No, oh, like, I, th- I think that's an excellent idea. Uh, Kind of interconnected now stories. that's heck, respectable. We even, heck, we could even do that with the origins of the Jedi and the origins of the Force. Have them all how have, have all three of them interconnect. Old Republic. You know, I would I would probably canonize the Rusan campaign. I love that I love that story so much. The new Sith Wars. I would probably I would probably have I'd probably pretty much canonize most of the old Republic Wars. Change up stuff here and there for it to fit. Most of them would probably still fit, considering the Old Republic is about ten, eight thousand to ten thousand years before the Skywalker saga. So, like a lot of it, really wouldn't contradict with current canon, as far as I know. But I would probably just have, I'd probably have those three stories: Force, Jedi, Sith, and then like make a whole entire new era, Old Republic era, baby. That's all I'd do. Well, and then just two other stories I thought of were the one I literally thought of today was just like humanizing the Tuscans getting a deep dive into their society. And then the one that uh, pretty much has been greenlit, we just don't know the details yet, is Cal discovering the Zepho, like more rediscovery. But we don't know that yet until we get that one guy on here. Ooh, ooh, the sizzle. Sizzle for the future. I like it. Uh, All right, cool. Connor, I love those ideas. I think especially your... um origins of the sith story um i think if you know joel what you were saying with like letting the sith truly be the protagonist and be sympathetic i don't think there is a better story for that to work for them than the moment that they are cast out from the jedi order um oh yeah dude and and that moment where the sith 
Yeah, I think the moment that the Sith become, you know, essentially victims of religious persecution. Oh, no, they weren't. They I were mean, Nazis. They weren't Lutherans. Okay. Come on. <laughs> they were making monsters. They were making fucking giant squids that wander around the earth. And Corbos, Terrace, like... <laughs> Eating entire civilizations. They're not some persecuted minority, Jared. Come on. I mean, I, you're, on. You're, you're not wrong. What I'm saying is that, like, at its core, it was that Jedi... Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, that they're at, different, and the Jedi don't like that. That's... Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying everything the Sith were doing were above board at that time. Like, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not down for squids eating terrace. That's I'm, I'm not here for that. Um, uh, you know, I I, 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 I try to keep I mean, scary tentacle monsters out of my Star Wars when I can. Um, so I just want to see. I just want to see Exegol like in Old Republic. No, I was, if it, it did exist during that time, we probably it, did. I'm just so like how they missed Corbin. out. Yep. What? Mike's know, Corban no, is still a thing. Here. Corban is still a thing though. Yeah. Exegol is a hidden world of the Sith, not the Sith home world. Yeah, dude, a lot of people get that wrong, and I'm like, no. no. Korriban was basically the same thing. It was hidden as well. It was in this big star cluster that was really tough well, no, to get but to. Yeah. By the no, great no, hyper... no, 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 Mike, no, no, what people get wrong, and just, I get so infuriated because, like, it's literally simple to look it up, but they don't because Star Wars fans suck, is, <laughs> like, do. people kept saying that, we do. It, the people kept saying that, like, Exegol, Exegol was the home world of the Sith. And I'm like, no. no. It's the hidden world of the Sith. What the does that even mean, though? The hidden oh, world. I don't know. I don't know. It's like that's a black they, site. It's like a government. Yeah. It's like a, it's yeah. off the books. A Sith black like, site. Yeah, they, okay. they, they, they kept it off site. the star cool maps. They kept it off the star maps because <laughs> they were like, we're going to do some fuck shit. <laughs> Over here in the unknown yeah. regions, we're gonna keep everybody away from it deliberately. But I'm just when, but they also though the aesthetic of Korriban and Exegol were literally the same, except that Korriban was, I mean, Korriban was yellow looking and reddish, while Exegol was darkish. But everything else was literally the same: the statues, the loneliness, all the, the all dust. The different Jedi temples look the same in canon. It would make sense that like all, that what the I'm same architects why, why are they, building the the structures the same way on multiple true. worlds. But it just seems like just kind of like it could have done a little more differentiation because they were too similar for me. And now, Connor, what earlier you said about middle of the road, like I, I respect that, but I think we've seen too much of that already, and it's just it hasn't been good. Like we had um like the Wendig novels. They, you could say they were very middle of the road. I mean, it was literally the same exact story as the old stuff. You know, Empire dies, Empire gets fragmented, and eventually the Empire falls. Same thing. And they were using a lot of the same ideas, same really kind of stories, stuff like that. Han and Leia have a kid. Uh, you know, Wraith Squadron becomes Phantom Squadron. Kashyyyk gets liberated. It was all It's all the same. But it, being that it was the same, it was just, like, meaningless. You know, my only sorry, I just, just had to say that. No, you, you're on to something. My only pushback would be is that I think the newer canon made a smart decision by expediting that process. Yeah. Because oh, like, yeah. like, like, like by the they time the sequels. That, yeah. Yeah. Like in canon, by the you time mean, the like, sequels are happening. I'm sorry. We keep there's a lag and we keep talking over each other. Speak, Mike. I'm sorry. When you say expedite, do you mean that when they expedited the Empire's fall? Yeah, I mean, lots of other people yeah. did. Like, just the story group in general was like, we're going to wrap this up in a few years because, yeah. you know, you're 20 years past Return of the Jedi and the Empire is still alive and kicking. Yeah. And it's 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 kind of silly. Like, and then that's that's my argument against the whole, like, oh, Anakin sacrifice means nothing. Or it's like, well, in well, Legends, the Empire refused to fucking die. <laughs> like, <laughs> But I guess my pushback would be that, like, he did fulfill the prophecy. He brought balance to the force. No, absolutely. That doesn't, yeah. that, that doesn't mean that the Empire would die. It doesn't mean that badness would just end from the galaxy. But I, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Does, and I, I agree with you. Silly. Yeah. yeah. His, his, yeah. The prophecy was that he that's was that's meant something... to take the Sith off the board. Yes. yes. The ba yes. Balance was always going to be temporary. The Sith were going to come back in one way or another, and they did, and then they got destroyed again, thankfully. But they're going to come back. It's just like... 
I think that's like I'm not gonna I'm gonna try and keep this as short as possible, but like I feel like some people just like didn't get that. I could be wrong. I could be just generalizing. I probably am generalizing, but I don't really care. It's just the fact that like some people were probably just like, "Ooh, balance is forever." No, no, mm, no. Balance was it, always going to be temporary, and it can even yeah. I, I mean, just, balance I can it. be balance can be permanent. But that requires the money-making machine that is Star Wars to stop telling stories. Star Wars to be <laughs> and everything ended, and it was all fine. Goodbye. <laughs> we have created a portal. We can harvest monies from new dimensions. That's what Disney's going to say. Goodbye now. Goodbye, Earth. We have ascended to the fourth yeah, dimension, and they'll, and they'll step back and leave Star Wars balance forever. Balance was permanent, so. But, yeah, no, I'm here yeah. for that. Um, read the novel. Thanks for reminding me. Like, I've been meaning to reread them. I sorry. What did you say, Connor? Again? No, no. I've been meaning to reread them. But then again, I'm. I need to read so much stuff. Dude, with just, Star just do, Wars. Don't. I'm sorry, Chuck. But Connor, don't torture yourself through that again. Just, just, just Wikipedia. I like them. I really liked them. So well, I get I, okay, so, I, get I, I respect. I just. I couldn't. You know me. I couldn't stand his prose. And no, I, dude. I, I, I totally get it. His prose was totally. my number one qualm. His stories, my second biggest problem. But the prose was infuriating. Anyway, but I'm glad that you like it. I don't. I am not. Really love the story. I, yeah. I know it's. Fu- I know it's plucked straight out. I know it's practically plucked straight out of the EU. But that's pretty much why I like it, is because it's pretty much plucked straight out of the EU. Mm. Which shows that the mm, EU has basically. a lot of merit for a lot of the it stupid does. stuff it that's does. in it, even though I think there's very little stupid stuff that's in it. Jared and I, I know we disagree on that. I think there's more good about it than bad. No, but, hey, 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 hey. But, I think it's. Yeah. I think it is more killer than filler, but there is some dumb filler. Yeah. <laughs> well, is, is Holiday Special technically EU? We're not like, touching that. that. We're not touching that right now. We're not going down the holiday like the, special rabbit hole. That's what we got to do for like our first post like code green celebration. We just got to get together and watch and get like, yeah. And like have a I few watched the first 20 minutes of it and I was oddly entertained. Yeah. It, again, Mike, I'm I'm already, I already want to do this for Christmas. I already want to do the holiday <laughs> special for Christmas. We're not talking about it anymore until the end of the year. <laughs> It'll Connor, be, be it's good night, birthday. not goodbye. Wait, what did you say, Alexis? It'll be for my birthday party. Let's do that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Connor, worst. it's good night, not goodbye. Dun, 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 dun. God, I watched it like once, and like, like I watched the first twenty minutes, and then like it was like, oh wait, I got to do some stuff, and then just yeah. totally forgot about it. Before we it's transition, that kind of movie too. It doesn't even it doesn't even like stick with you, but it like p- parts of it do, but other parts like you're just like this is. So real quick story yeah. yeah, about the holiday special. I was at some off Broadway Star Wars play in New York, I think like two years ago or so. Of course. That's the coolest when, hipster Star Wars shit I've ever heard. And this, and this was when I was still on that one podcast, I think. Yeah. 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 I yeah. think I might've said it in that chat. I don't know, but, um, it was the Star Wars, it was the Star Wars off Broadway show. And, one of the segments that they had was they would have they had they asked two volunteers from the audience to come up and like do some sort of trivia thing so i'm like all right sure why not it's probably gonna be some star wars stuff i'll you know probably win yeah. something i think i won like some candy or whatever um awesome. but it was all holiday special questions <laughs> the one piece of star wars content i've never touched <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, oh boy, this is gonna be bad. And I somehow got two questions right. I think they were like gimmies, nice. but like still, I was like, it was oh funny too God. because they had us put on a uh, like little hats or so or little like costumes. <laughs> I think I had on like the lekus. I want to say <laughs> if the lekus or like what what or uh, something to do with Jar Jar. I can't remember, but it was really funny. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Hi. Before we transition over to oh, Joel's, uh, what was that, Connor? I got Cheez-Its. Now I remember. I got Star Wars Cheez-Its. That, <laughs> that is good a gift as any. Uh, before we transition over to Joel's elevator pitch here, um, uh, right before Christmas uh, and right before Rise of Skywalker, 
Um, I was I was decorating the Christmas tree uh, at my grandmother's house with my little sister, and I made a joke to her. She's like, "Let's watch a Christmas movie," and I was like, "Okay, well, let's think of something to watch." I made a joke the holiday special existing, oh, and God. she looked me in the eyes and was like, "I want to watch it." No. And I was like, no, no, we're not. We're not no. watching the Star Wars holiday special. I was like, this is impressive because you're seven and somehow we're about to like experience deep lore right now. But no, she's like, I want to watch it. I've I've never seen this child more attentive to a piece of media in my life. She was sucked in and it ter- terrified me because she legitimately loved it. And I think she's a I think she's going to grow up to be an arsonist. Like you don't like you, you don't grow up normal after you enjoy the holiday special. I've you, never should, seen it. <laughs> you, you don't want to be you don't you don't want to be initiated into the higher mysteries just yet, Alexis. It's, OK. Uh, All right. You, uh... <laughs> But for my birthday present, that's what you guys owe me, is we're going to watch that. You'll say that now, but when we're done, <laughs> you will curse us forever. Yeah. We wish that you had never met any of us. I already do. I already we're we're going to play this episode back to you so you can just take in that you signed up for this live on air. The gall that you showed to do this. <laughs> it's like it's make a little Jedi, man. If you're... <laughs> so, Joel... Let's hear it. Yeah. What is what is your Star Wars elevator pitch? Okay, well, listen. <laughs> Someone has to say it. Two words, Darth Banks. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. How Preparing much money Levi's did Levi banner. How much did Levi pay you to say that cuz he couldn't be on the night? I is said that, that Levi, just for Joel? Levi. It's probably not I, even Le- Joel. It's probably Levi in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> I that's not probably my real one, thought. but I thought about it and I was like, I have to at least say it because someone needs to. Uh, so my real one is, um, I feel like we. I mean, it's a, it's kind of basic. I just, I mean, I had a few days to think about it, so I was just like, not really thinking about it too hard, just trying to come up with something. Uh, and I feel like we don't have enough information on Qui-Gon. Mm. So why not do a Qui-Gon origin story? Mm. Keep talking. That's a good one. Keep talking. I mm. like this. This pleases um, me. You know, we're introduced uh, to him in a very great movie, of course, one of many. Um, but I feel like we get to know so much about Obi-Wan and who he is and I feel like Qui-Gon Liam Neeson doesn't get enough love when it comes to you know the fact that he's just kind of there and he, he he plays a role and then he dies and that's all you know that's all we get of him mm-hmm. and granted now I'm sure there's plenty of more uh plenty more information you know in canon that you can go find somewhere but for the everyday you know average lover of star wars i feel like there's not enough information that's easily just consumable you know what i mean no yeah i feel like go back and add even more background information as to how everything came about and how he became who he was And, and you know we consider him a very very wise you know master right And that image is untarnished. So it'd be nice to see him have more of a complex character development. Uh, You know, see where he came from, see where he ended up, how he got there. So no, no, that's 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 excellent. And I, you know, off the top of my head, Joel, what you were saying about like, well, maybe there's more canon material out there. The only in canon stuff we have about a younger Qui Gon is in uh, Master and Apprentice, and there's like two or three flashbacks of him training with Dooku. And I, Mm. I think there's some, there's a little bit of Qui-Gon stuff in Dooku Jedi lost, but like what you just said is brilliant because a, you know, it gives us more time with Qui-Gon and also gives us time to see Dooku when he was a Jedi still. So you kill two very highly sought after birds with one stone by doing that. And I also think that there's a, you said young Qui Gon, and I, I immediately like my brain fan cast immediately. Imagine Michael Fassbender 
as a younger mm. Qui Gon. I thought that, that's immediately where my mind went. Uh, oh. We heard it here first, folks. He's quite. Uh, he's a bit red looking for Qui Gon. You know, Qui Gon's got more sallow skin, but Michael Fassbender is a pink. He's pink. I mean, we also have to consider the fact but that still. the only image of Qui Gon we have is Liam Neeson. So, I, I, can we <laughs> like? Uh, it's just like, it's just like go back in time and get Liam Neeson something. as like a young, younger, you know, and kind of. <laughs> I mean, it brings me back to the whole debate of, like, whether or not people liked who played young Han Solo, you know? Yeah. Uh, Literally the only reason, he's literally the reason I cared about Han Solo. See, personally, I I think Alan Ehrenreich was good. I I love Harrison's portrayal now, but I don't think I would have loved it as much without Alden. And And the fact that he was the lead in the movie. He wasn't an ensemble character. Oh, that's a spicy take. Spicy that's just Han's the way ensemble. I thought it. Just... Han ensemble, if you will. Well, yeah, but like, cause <laughs> each character gets equal foot in in this original trilogy. So, like, I don't. That's just the way I see it. No, that's fair. I'm here for that. Uh, Joel, is is do you have a, any other ones, or is that your is that is that the? Are you going hard with just one and throwing it out there? I'm going hard with that one. I mean, if I was to just pick, like, how I did it originally was like, what if I could just pick a single character, obscure or not, from, you know, the movies specifically, and what I could try to come up with. And and so I went through, I was like, okay, well, let's go through the the first movie. And that, you know, that's how I got uh, my, my uh, the whole Qui-Gon thing. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we get a backstory for uh, for um, battle droids. I don't know. Roger, I, I, Roger, Roger, Roger. A Star or Wars even, story. You know, we yeah, talk I, about. I was about to say that we talk about the battle yeah, yeah. and everything. But what if we actually got a more in depth look at? Um, oh man, I don't know enough. Um, Danic Jericho, the vampire and oh, Zadi yeah. Where, uh, brain drinker. Boba Fett was in Clone Wars. Camino? He was the Yes, thank you. Camino. And Ooh. like if we had more information on Camino and how like like because you know it's just vaguely referenced in the movies, like are you, you know yeah, but- and, and Obi-Wan was like kind of undercover and he just took the cover of they who they assumed him to be. You know, it would be nice to actually yeah. know more about how that developed and how that became what it was. That kind the of ties into one of my pitches. So. Shit was so confusing and bizarre. Like it doesn't make sense. Like let's say Django didn't get whacked by Mace at Geonosis, would he have opened fire on the clones? You know, I just want everybody to ponder that. I like what? What the hell would have happened? What would he have done? There, that you know? is the, the, like the the back. Just think about the that. back forty minutes of Attack of the Clones is this this breeding ground of what ifs that would just that that melts your gray matter if you think about it for too long. Because um, it, it's it's poorly written. Okay, like it it wasn't. Just that's it. I think hot that's take: it. What was poorly written were the new last three movies. Sorry. Joel, I will come to your house. (laughs) Not entirely wrong there, Joel, buddy boy. I like the post going around about the whole, like, you know, the drawing of the horse. (laughs) Listen, (laughs) it's not that wrong. (laughs) I like the one that, I like, I'm more like the one that that compares Star Wars drawn horse to to Lord of the Rings and how it's a perfectly drawn horse for all three movies. (laughs) <laughs> listen, listen. I am not gonna waste my breath defending the rise of Skywalker very emphatically because I've not made it a secret that I am not a huge fan of that movie. I like it, but you will die on the hill of the Last Jedi. You can come. You, and, can, come and and you, come, and you can come and take me. You have died on that hill. You can come and take me. I've come back. I have. I have become one with the Force. The. <laughs> The sequel trilogy is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Um, but yeah, Joel, thank you for that. And you're welcome. I think uh, that that was a great segue because uh, I know some of what she's going to talk about. We're gonna we're gonna pitch to the consular. 
Okay, so mine are very basic, though, because, like, I'm a fan, but I'm not into the deep stuff. Um, huh. Hear me out. Preach. Number one, Broom Kid. <laughs> broom, one broom, right. broom boy. Mary Wags, baby. Give me that Mary story. Wags. I want to know what, what happens. happens to the broom kid. <laughs> <laughs> he was killed in a slave revolt probably like two weeks after. No. <laughs> probably, probably got thrown in a bag. He got run over kid. by um, what, the father. Anyway. <laughs> no, <laughs> you say, Alexis, you say that. In my mind, immediately, like, now I want to, like, appeal to Mike and his sensibilities as far as, like, legends goes. And now I kind of, like, want to rewrite canon and have Broom Boy grow up to be, like, the canon version of Darth Crate. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Like, like, with, like with with the obelisk armor and like the crazy helmet with the crown on it and the twin lightsaber. Yeah, the like, face tats. Jedi Temple oh and then like yeah, he tra <laughs> trains at Ray's Jedi Temple then gets like gets disillusioned with the order even though she's like runs into the Yuzhen Vong and gets yeah. infected with fucking coral seeds. Yeah, anyway, L sorry, literally literally no. just the same story. You just put it in the sequel trilogy canon and just go from there. <laughs> it's episode 10. Lovely. What was the, Okay, so the other one... So, The Rise of Skywalker, but not. <laughs> like, one more time, it, sorry. The Rise of Skywalker, but not. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I also did not like that movie, and there were some things I did like, obviously, but I just did not like the ending, and I wanted my Ben Demption. Well, it there was a Ben Demption, but it was ripped out from under you. I'm Raylo trash as well, so I wanted to see more of that. And, I turned uh, to Raylo whenever we watched the movie. Jared knows the moment. <laughs> 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 oh, he looked at me. It, it, I, look, if there is one thing that kept me from going in like immediately into a depressive state after the credits started rolling was Ray Skywalker and like looking out into the sunset and I'm like trying to process everything that just happened and like trying to separate. Oh, my God. Ray became the Jedi. I've always wanted to see her be. Ben! And like trying to process all of this at once. And then Joel looks at me just as the credits are going. He's like, I think I'm a Ray and like that was the one thing that kept me from tail spinning and i just had to lay like, hold on to that close to my heart and i was like i converted them i got at least one of them in <laughs> at yeah, the 11th I, hour i just really wanted to see them together actually and yeah. see where that went um another thing that's already kind of a thing i don't know if you remember us talking about it jared but I'm very fascinated with the psychology of early Vader. I want to see a lot of that. I want I want to consume it. I have to read about it, but I like the moments of Anakin coming out with Vader and like I don't know. I have to read up on it, but I would like to see it. Uh, that that's such a great, you know, spring of content too because like you know you have a lot of what has been done in canon so far is, is all very like Padme centric and mm -hmm. him processing that but there hasn't been a whole lot of like I mean there it's been touched on but there hasn't been a whole lot of really processing the loss of everything else and you know how 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 exactly does he mourn his his relationship with Obi Wan and Ahsoka and you know all those things? So I mean I'm right there with you. I can never get enough Vader trying to Vader really hard. Um, mm -hmm. We also lost Darth Id. Um, I don't know where he went. Uh, got him. They they got him. They got him. The Empire got him. <laughs> it, it's, it's eternal, it's, baby. It's it's been. They're gonna come back. They're gonna they come back him. eventually. It, it, he has, he has, he has, uh, he is now a Sith Lord for them. Yes. <laughs> He's a commander. He's finally been brought in. And we have Darth Id back and we are back to business. Uh, with that, thank you, Alexis. I agree with everything you said. Um, and I, I want it all. And 
We're going to go back in time and we're going to have Ryan Johnson make the rise of Skywalker and we're all going to live yep. in a very happy world. Yep. Yep. Where, yep. Yep. Where, where uh, Ben Solo isn't dead and I don't cry a little bit every time I watch that goddamn movie. Um, yep. 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 Now, wait. Yeah. Jim, wait. How do you think that, let's say Ben survives, what happens to him after that? Eric Bow, baby. I okay. Well, I, I, we're gonna get a little bit topical uh, now. Now that I can kind of riff on this new fandom, I think you do with Ben Solo what they did with Zuko in season two of Avatar: The Last Airbender. I think you have him go into isolation and kind of do so his own nothing thing. Nothing can top it. There's nothing. I did, well, I'm, not, I, I'm saying something not akin to that. that. I'm saying mm-hmm. something akin to that. It will never happen. I also think that you could do a fun story with Ben, you know, because when you get down to the brass tacks of it all, this wasn't just a, oh, I want power, therefore I'm going to turn to the dark side and commit all these heinous acts. He was manipulated, abused, and coerced into doing a lot of that shit. And fell victim to... It, he, he was he was a victim of Snoke and, by extension, Palpatine, and was forced into doing a lot of horrible shit, shit that he didn't choose to do. Um, so I think knowing that, knowing that he played a role in helping defeat Palpatine once and for all, that the new Republic would be merciful with him and would recognize that like, this was not a decision made by him. Uh, Hmm. and I think that they would probably put him on some type of probation. And I think that that offers a great story opportunity to have Ben personally as as the former supreme leader who knows all of the top secret shit for the first order battle plans tactics you know what their worst case scenario contingency plans were that you have Ben be the one to lead the charge of wiping out the first order remnant you know because hmm. they, because they said in the novel and in the uh, visual dictionary that you know, the Battle of Exegol did not completely wipe out the First Order. You know, it mm. was the beginning and kind of like with Endor, at this point, you've broken the back of the Empire and you've broken the back of the Final Order or Sith Eternal or whatever you want to call it. But there's still going to be these pockets of, uh, res- yeah, ironically, resistance um, of the Sith Eternal or Final Order, First Order, whatever you want to call it. Uh so I think that would be an excellent place to start. I think you can. I also would just love to see the process of somebody who fell to the dark side come back from it. Because that's not something we really have in canon yet. Like seeing somebody live through that transition. You know, yeah. like George. The we have is Darth Vader dying immediately after. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and then that's my biggest thing is I under like I'm not, I'm not the type of person to say that Vader wasn't redeemed. However, I also am willing to say and kind of like push back to that that okay, good for you. You killed the man that's lied to you for twenty years when he tried to kill your kid. Like that was kind of a given. Here's a cookie. I guess you go to Force Heaven now. <laughs> With Ben. You know, and again, and George Lucas said this before, and I'm, I'm not the first person to say this. I just I find this concept fascinating that the dark side is like a drug mm. that that when you expose yourself to its power and that when you let that shit consume you, especially the way Ben did, you know, we're like he was led to believe that all he had was his power. All he had was this corrosive, destructive drug that is the dark side of the force that like you could have an amazing story that basically parallels that of a recovering addict with Ben Solo where he has to become more, where he has to, you know, forget the trappings of Kylo Ren. And, you know, like that's a lot easier said than done, you know, like when you basically program your own mind to be ready to take a life and snap and cause all kinds of carnage at the drop of a hat. That is not something that you just kind of stop doing overnight. Yeah. So I think, I think you could tell easily the most fascinating story in the history of this franchise. If you, if Ben Solo survives, (laughs) right. 
you know, put him on the stand proverbially and make him face down the sins of Kylo Ren. Right. And at the end, you know, that doesn't mean the Skywalker bloodline has to die. <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice if, if, um, if we could have seen the line continue. I'm, I'm all about royal families and all of that. I, I'm disappointed that there wouldn't be more Skywalkers to oversee stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and as much as I do, you know, I, I do truly consider Rey a Skywalker. You know, like, she's a part of that family, and I can't be convinced otherwise. However, for the actual family line to continue, like, it's not even about, like, seeing the Skywalker family bloodline continue so much as it's about, like, having Ray and Ben who have clearly learned truly from the sins of the past of their families to mm. be able to, like, okay, we know everything not to do. Mm. Mm. We can fix this. We can do better than the people who came before us because now we have all of the resources available. Um, to just hit that out of the park and clean house and fix everything. Yep. Uh, so, uh, sorry that my answer to your question was rambly, Mike. Um, uh, and with that, thank you. With that, Mike, what is your elevator pitch? Well, uh, basically, like, kind of three things. So, first thing, I always enjoyed, I never read the novels, but I always enjoyed the Warlord Zinj. I don't know how you say his name. Zinj. Zinny. Zinj. I, li I like those stories. It, Warlord Zinj was basically this um, very cunning and goofy and weird uh, imperial officer who was able to carve himself a pretty nice empire following uh, the Emperor's death at Endor. And it took like a combined force of Imperial and New Republic force to finally defeat him. And I always liked the character of Warlord Zinj. It'd be kind of cool to see another character like that. I got a kind of this brilliant adversary who's also very goofy and loves leading people to uh, leading like by misconception and confusion. And that's how he gains his victories. I like that. Um, and then I also like, I want to see sort of, there was this comic series, the, the legacy comics. Now all the, I think technical, the, the first legacy issues, they were all completed, whatever, da, 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 da. And then they started, whoever the writers, I don't know who they, these people were, the artists, they started creating another series of comics. And this was like in the aftermath of this really big war that occurred a hundred some years after uh, uh, episode six. But sadly, when freaking Order 66 Day happened, when Disney declared all the EU to be non-canon, that sort of ended. It was an Order 66 Day. It felt just like Order 66. It was like everything was ripped out from under me. I know that it, it was a big day. It was a hard day. It was a painful day. It was Order 66, and it was it made me sad. And anyway, that whole new set of stories just ended. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'd like to see that. I, I, I I'm for I'm I'm one for kind of seeing new stuff to be published under Legends. I think that would be kind of neat. Or do some sort of third thing. I don't know. I just want to see those stories completed no i think i i totally agree with you i would love to see them say we're gonna make stories but they are not going to be in canon these will exist firmly in the legends continuity um i agree with you on that mike i i asked this completely in earnest you do yeah. know that they did finish legacy right no you mean are you talking about with like are what are we talking about are you talking about Cade and all of that yeah yeah, I know. I know that like Cade's arc ended. I know that, but they started doing stuff after that. Oh, see, I'm just in my mind. I I thought all that ended with Cade with killing Crate no. and then throwing him into the sun. No, no, yeah, no. That I know, yeah. But they started doing stuff after that, like post uh, Fell Empire, Galactic Alliance, and Jedi Order, and that new Galactic Federation triumvirate working together, trying to stop. Uh, a resurgent one Sith. And, you know, they, they played her. It's kind of hilarious because in the Fell Empire, okay, just side story, there's this character named, uh, what's his name? 
damn it, Bar- soon tier fell. He became this really awesome Thai pilot in the days of the old empire. Later, he had a grandson who rose up in the ranks, but da 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 da, worked with the Chiss for a while, the blue people. His name was Jagged Fell. Jagged later married Jaina Solo, and they had kids, and their kids became the leaders of this new empire called the Fell Empire, which is like the Galactic Empire 2.0, and it was. It was a lot better than the Palpatine Empire. But anyway, it's kind of funny because, like, there were Skywalker descendants. They were both, like, actual Skywalkers, and there were people descended from, like, the Solos, too. And later in these new, new legacy books, there was this character, uh, I think, who was a literal descendant. Like, she still had the Solo name, which I thought was really neat. She was a Solo. But now I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what happens because they've stopped the story. But I'd like to see that again. Oh, and then my final, my big pitch that I really want, I want to see uh, Yuzhen Vong War. I think that was a terrifying concept. I think that was awesome. I think it was scary. You know, you've got these extra galactic invaders coming in. And what's kind of awesome about them is they're sort of uh, kind of real life. Because, like, a lot of times what wars start over, people just, I mean, <laughs> it's disturbing. A lot of Sometimes a lot of people, they want resources. They just want living space, and that's what the Yuzhen Vong wanted. They just wanted to conquer. They wanted somewhere to live. Uh, and the scary thing about the Vong was they used organic weapons. They hated machines, and they sort of existed outside the Force. Like, you couldn't tell. Reach me out, too. Huh? I do agree with you on that, Mike. That would be cool if the Yuzhen Vong were brought into canon. Like I know a lot of people do not like them. I don't well, why? And I'm kind of I'm kind of iffy on them, but like man, dude, I would love them. Why don't people like them? Oh Jared, why I don't why, know. why are you of the I, I personally don't know cuz I don't care enough to n- care about why people don't like stuff. Yeah. That's not how I roll. That's how I never rolled. Try wise. But, yeah, I just don't care. Yeah. But, like, the Vong were so inherently interesting to me, I need to read more about them. But, like, if they were put, if they were brought into... I'm pretty sure they are pretty much being brought back into canon under the name of the Krisk. Really? Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, they sound pretty much the well, same. Well, I mean, the, the <clears throat> Grisk are just kind of, like... The comparisons between the Grisk and the uh, Yuzhong Vong basically end with the whole... The Chiss don't like them, but the Chiss know they're coming. That's the type that's thing. The same, yeah. Uh, and I mean, then that's kind of where it ends. Is like it's not implied that like the Grisk are like immune to the Force or anything. Um, that's what I kind of find really cool. Yeah, and that that made them more like that. Just freaks me out. That, like, see, that's what that you're that, not. They killed the New Republic. The New Republic died because of the Yuzhen Vong invasion, and they had to reorganize themselves, which is also really fascinating. And it presents... Like, I get that... Mm. No, 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 Mike, what I was just going to say really quick was just, like, I get that, well, like, people like Jared and whomstever else are not huge on the whole, like, they exist outside the Force thing. Totally get it. Totally understandable. It's, like... The Force is life in Star Wars, and for them to exist outside the Force would be sort of to exist out of life, and they wouldn't really exist in that sense. But I don't know. There's just something inherently interesting about the fact that the Vong do not exist within the Force. And the fact is they can't be, like, manipulated by it. I don't know. That's just so cool. I think it was also partly... Conceptually, at least. Because they, they were so brutal. I think they ended up accidentally killing their home world, like Yuzhen Tar... And I think it was... Yikes. Didn't the planet... I think it took them outside of the forest. Like, it sort of banished them in some sort of way. It was... I have no idea whatsoever. I'll take your word on it. What? For now. You, you, you know about the world zone of Masika at all? The living planet? Nope. No, okay. I don't know a lick of Legends material, man. That stuff never interested me as a kid. And yet, here I am advocating for... The vault. Canon EU stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mike, to answer your question, and, and Connor, you know, hit it on the head, and I will just follow it up and say my main gripe with the Yuzhong Vong is just I don't like the whole not being able, not touching the Force thing. That's pretty much it, you know. I just I I have a love hate relationship with a lot of post Return of the Jedi stuff from Legends. I I think that like yeah, it's it, it's just a lot. It's a lot that happens, and like. It, yeah. How do I how do I put it? And like I don't, 
again, I don't want to make it sound like I'm shitting on like your favorite type of Star Wars because uh, I do like it. There's a lot in there that I like. It's just like 99 percent of the stories that happen in that era are fucking apocalyptic. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. like that's where I pretty much realized is that like there, there's not a whole lot of like generally, you know, like stories like Master and Apprentice. You know, that it's just like we're going to send two Jedi in because some shit's going left on this one planet and we need somebody to, like, make sure that this political transition happens smoothly, you know. And that's not to say I don't like the all the, you know, all the cards are on the table, you know, everything is riding on this one moment kind of stories. But every single, like, almost every single story in Post Return of the Jedi Legends is like... Here's this super weapon. The Emperor's back. There's, you know, horrifying creatures that you can't use the Force on. The Sith come back five times. The Empire won't fucking die. Abeloth. Like, everything. Abeloth. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, I oh. forgot about Here, her. That, that reminds me. We're going to, we're gonna like, live on air traumatize Alexis with this. Um, oh, God. Are you showing her the picture I'm, of Avalon? I'm, I'm going to tell Alexis. You're yes. going you're gonna to do a quick Google search for us real quick, okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're going to type in Abeloth Star Wars. <laughs> Whenever you said that name, I was like, Abel, huh? <laughs> what? Abeloth. A-B-E-L-O-T-H, I think is how it's spelled. Yeah, correct. It's yep. like the first search option. And I have Abeloth Star Wars. Then please, I guess, Jared, are you going to say put your findings to the screen? No. no sh- <laughs> oh. are, are you looking at her like shooting force lightning in her hand? With, and she's got, like, a, her- a, what is this? <laughs> that is a thing of beauty. Her. I mean, there, there's another picture that was even more cringe. It looked like some weird, like, some, like from, like, a 90s kid's book, like, a Goosebumps cover. What? I don't even know. No, like... that one. There's one where she's shooting Force Lightning, and she's got, like, short red hair. It's, like, really creepy, and there's, like, Jedi and Sith fighting to kill her. Yeah, because it don't... took Luke Why and Darth Krayt you... to kill her. Right. Yeah. No, not that one. Just look what? Like Avalon fighting Jedi and Sith. But, yeah, I just she... wanted what? her to see the toothy <laughs> cheeks. I just wanted so her I, to see the toothy cheeks. Why does she look like that? <laughs> Wait, which one? Like, what you mean I, the one she showed? Oh yeah, the in one. general. I what? Yeah, there's, Who is there's this? stuff out there. Yeah. I need to know more. Actually, I'm kind of interested. <laughs> Vaguely fascinating, but it, I, I think I can see where Jared thinks it's all kind of weird. But and I like weird. I like weird. <laughs> I like how weird <laughs> shit like that is. It's just the fact that it is like constantly the galaxy is going to catch fire at any minute in Legends post Return of the Jedi. That's an interesting. That's a. That's. I think that's fairly accurate. Yeah, like you have. That's <sighs> it. Yeah, that's the one. She looks like she's got these damn squid hands, and it's like <laughs> squid <her> hands. <laughs> Abeloth has squades. I. It, that's entering some uh, gross territory there that I don't want to get into. <laughs> No, but yeah, no. Oh man. No. So, Mike, is 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 that all you have for your elevator pitch, my friend? Yeah, I just I just think the Vong were really neat. Like, oh shit. But I, I think that's an interesting point you brought up. Yeah, because you've got Thrawn coming back. You've got somehow Palpatine's returned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Yavetha, their damn airships. Yeah. Luke going into the the. What was the meat thing with the the the, the golden scales warb? What was it? Warbnall? No, not warbnall. Remember, you know what I mean, though. That that like the meat slab with golden, with gilded like uh, epaulets on it. I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name, but I have I can see it in my mind. It was really weird and like yeah. Anyway, yeah, that was it. I think the Vong are neat. I think they should. I, I heard they almost became canon. Like, they were almost in a Clone Wars episode. Yeah. Like, it yeah. got, like... Is that true? They were very close. Damn it. I can't look away from her. Huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't look away from Avaloth. 
<laughs> now, a good way to keep her away, actually, like so she doesn't come to your house, print a picture of her out and then put it on your door. She'll be scared away of her own image. That's why they would make, that's why in ancient I, they take statues of demons so that the demons wouldn't come. They'd see their own image and they'd be afraid and they'd run I'm away. Already gonna visit my nightmares. I came across this thing that said, "Is Snoke Canon Abeloth?" Well, now we know that's well, not true. I hope I want everybody to know oh, right now that this is the last episode of Knights of the Nerd Republic, and I'm <laughs> quitting the Star Wars fandom after hearing that. You're welcome. <laughs> is does Bruno Mars is gay? <laughs> well, now we know for a fact that's thankfully not canon. So she's freaking Pennywise, Star Wars Pennywise. She, yeah, she's Snow. Star Wars. It. She's a, that's exactly what she is. Yeah. it's a Originally, she was, like, this kindly homeless woman. Then she, like, found the trio on Mortis, and she drank from, like, what was it, the Pool of Knowledge, and what was the other thing? Not gonna lie, in the pool of that knowledge. actually like, sounds like, dope. She smoked, like, a, like the, the dandelion of life, like, doobie or something. It was weird. I don't know. And she became okay. that, that thing. Death mm, sticks, that, okay, not even once, really Abeloth. Cool. <laughs> Wait, what? I said death sticks, and not even once, Abeloth. <laughs> me after, me before death sticks, me after death sticks. <laughs> God. Uh, real quick, before we hop over uh, to my elevator pitch, uh, Levi did send in what he wanted us to speak uh, for him on his behalf. Uh... We want the uh, Levi wants like Star Wars, the Old Republic, like the MMO, specifically that era. Um, I'm assuming a movie. He, I'm going to read directly because I know he would be angry if I didn't say this as writ. Make Dash Rendar unquestionably canon again. Madarku Maga Maga. Yes. So, and then. I sh- I'm a dark Umac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a... Can't take my blasters. I want that. I legitimately want to make merch that says Madarku Aga. Now, that is so funny. Yeah. Whatever it is, like, whatever the... What's the initials again? What are they? M, make, that Madar... Madarku Aga, yeah. Madarku Aga. Yeah. <laughs> we chant that at, like... God... <laughs> And then uh, Levi's third elevator pitch, the political maneuverings of Darth Darth Binks. Um, look, I hate to say it, but like, I'm not a disciple of that idea, but I, I mean, knowing George Lucas, I think Levi might be onto something. Stop I'm talking. Sorry. Mike, huh? if you say any more, this is your last episode on this show. Darth Darth <laughs> Binks. Joel, I will find a new right. editor. <laughs> Give me a rational argument that why won't. Lucas was never going to take. I don't know. Like, you find this guy in the woods, and he's an idiot, but he's not. That's the story. Me? What? Yeah, that, said me. That's how we found Lexi. Like, we found her in, in, in the forest. She was wearing long, white, flowing robes. That's why you guys can't see her. That's why we do only podcasts. There's no video. Yeah, she has teeth all? coming out of her cheek. Uh, Lexi <laughs> is actually Abeloth, and we, you know, she's Canada. Oh, that is an insult. <laughs> but it would Abolet. be a cool ass po- cosplay. It'd be a cool ass cosplay. Wait, what did Mike say? Abelexi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> New name. That's your consular. instead of the consular. It's that <laughs> Alexis Abelexi Kapal. Kapal. Ooh, that's not bad. I hate it. Uh, one moment. Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> Thanks. It's Kapaling. <laughs> that's not even how you say my last name. Kapalov. Abelov. Isn't it Kapal? Kapal. It's Kapel. Oh, no, it's Kapel. Kapel. Okay, like I'm cool. saying, if you try to you try to combine that with Abelov. Oh, oh yeah, so no, that funny. was perfect, Mike. Capella off. Kellogg's. Um, yes. Kellogg's. Kellogg. Yeah, it's just cereal. It's yes. just cereal. <laughs> the only way to destroy the Jedi is with cereal. Um, 
just start throwing fucking weedies at Luke Skywalker. He'll go down eventually. Can I can I bring up something that I thought of as you guys were talking about Jar Jar? Sure. Yes. This might oh, be dumb. Were we talking about Jar Jar? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Star Wars is inherently dumb. Sorry. So like, go ahead. Go ahead. It's fine. Um, Jared, you might like this. John Mulaney as Jar Jar Binks. Yes. <laughs> I, okay. I, I, I like Mulaney, he's too. Yeah. Too, okay. I could kind of get with that. Or maybe you would. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be dope. I will take your John Mulaney as. I, I okay. I'm assuming this is like old man Jar Jar, like or Jar Jar post Revenge of the Sith. Well, or are no. we are we doing a Jar Jar Binks origin story starring John Origi- and Mulaney? I was thinking origin story, but I would like to see old Jar Jar, and. Because John Mulaney's basically 85, too. So, uh... <laughs> you know what happened to Jar Jar uh, after Revenge of the Sith, right, Alexis? I believe Jared has told me this. I can't quite recall the story. He became a clown ahead. on Naboo. He's a street clown in the galaxy. Yes, I did know that. Poor guy. So, I will take your John Mulaney as Jar Jar Binks. And raise you George St. Geegland as Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, a different, different, no. And, totally, no. <laughs> and reserve John for a young man Palpatine story. No. No. Flip because... that around. George St. Geegland. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Honest, how about in how about instead of John as young Palpatine, we have Matt Smith. Stop giving an actual good fan casting, Connor. Shut up, you you, you killjoy. Considering he was pretty much gonna be in the movie, Matt Smith is too. I wouldn't young say Palpatine. it was a fan cast. Listen, no, he can't be young Palpatine. It has to be just just imagine, just imagine the scene in the Plagueis novel where Plagueis has Palpatine murder his family in cold blood on that train. Just imagine that, but it is literally just John Mulaney. You want me to do what? Like literally no, that I, before he just I incinerates his family that. with force lightning. My, my no, I really don't think so. George is saying giggling. He's so out of character, but I would be so down for it. I love when he, when John Mulaney's so give like. Me Star Wars, give me a Star Wars Infinities TV show. <laughs> John Mulaney's so small that he has to be Jar Jar. <laughs> that it would be funny. And Joel, you're right about George as Palpatine. Because now I just want to see like this scene in Return of the Jedi when he like spins the throne around. He's like, welcome, young Skywalker. That he just spins it around just. Oh, hello. And then, like, uses the force to take off the handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> now you will experience the true power of too much tuna. Um, Ew. So, uh, my elevator pitches, I have I have Trace. I have three. Wow. First I can't one, believe we haven't gotten there yet. What was that? I said, I just think it's hilarious, so... How we've we, uh, we've been enjoying this time and how time has flown and we haven't even gotten years yet. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy it. I, I, you know, we're all like that was the, what I was hoping for with this conversation that it would spawn countless pocket conversations. So for me, and I know I, you know, went on a very long Twitter rant about how I would throw a baby in a volcano to make this happen. Um <laughs> I try to stay away from Twitter. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't use that verbiage on Twitter. I waited until I was in a hot microphone so that somebody could take that uh, out of context one day. Um, I so badly want basically the Star Wars version of Soul Calibur. I think that in... Yeah, okay. I think if... That that is... What was that, Mike? That is, I'm not a very smart man, Jenna. Uh, <laughs> no, Soul Calibur. It, it's a it's a really fun fighting game. Um, oh, okay. It revolutionized. It, it it does need more close on a lot of its characters. Um, 
That I can agree with. Uh, however, it was the one. It was one of the first fighters to ever attempt like a three D space. Oh. So it's not just like the side scrolling, like forward, backward. It's yeah. forward, backward, left, right, and then you know up, left, back, left. You know all that stuff. It's called the eight way run system. Okay. Uh, and I think that that mixed with the fact that Soul Calibur is a weapons based fighter. Mm. Almost every single character in that game either has a sword or an axe or like, you know, some type of weapon on them. Uh, and that was why the eight way run is so important, because a lot of that game is about parrying and guarding. And, you know, <clears throat> it's not as like combo driven as something like a Mortal Kombat or a Street Fighter. Mm. A mm. lot of it is the give and take and push and pull of a duel. And I think mm. to do a Star Wars game like that would be a lot of fun. I think if you do limit it to just lightsaber wielding characters, you know, people might get upset that they can't play as Han or Boba Fett or whatever. But I think it would be more fun to have a game that is solely based around lightsaber combat. I think at this stage of the Star Wars canon, you could have such a wide array of characters. Hmm. You know, you could you could throw everybody in there. From very, like, you can have all your favorite versions of characters. Like, you can have, you know, whatever era of Obi Wan you want. Throw them can in I there. Throw something in there, too. Sure. Um, so, like, something that. Okay, so I'm going to reference a game called Fable. Okay. I don't know how familiar you are with Sounds it. Sounds but... vaguely, vaguely familiar. I'm it, loosely it, familiar with Fable. Fable is a play, like, it's a make your own story game. So every decision you make forges a different storyline for you individually. And so like each game has like 3000 different outcomes kind of thing. Right. So oh. I, I want to take your idea you were just talking about with that game, make it that, and then add like the combat style, like the elaborate combat style of say like an Assassin's Creed or like a shadow of Mordor type game. Yeah. But like bring that. Yeah. No, mm. yeah, no, that would be a lot of fun. And it's funny you mentioned like the branching stories, Joel, because that was another thing that I would want to implement from Soul Calibur. Is that uh, Soul Calibur? Very famously, it's it has multiple story modes for each. It has a story mode for each character. You don't just play through oh, one right. story. Yeah. Like, you know, like most fighting games, you'll be like, like Injustice, for example, like, okay, chapter one, you're playing as Batman. You get to the end of chapter one. Okay, now you're playing as Nightwing or whatever. And it takes you through the one story that involves all of the characters. With Soul Calibur, each character has their own story going on that all links back to the main story about, you know, Soul Calibur and Soul Edge. <clears throat> With the Star Wars fighter you have the opportunity to do the same thing where like you can play through like take Obi-Wan for example. Okay. So we're going to play through Obi-Wan story mode. So you're going to go through and like most like fighting game arcade modes have like eight to 10 fights. So you pick Obi-Wan, you get uh, Obi versus Maul, Obi versus Dooku, Obi versus Grievous, Obi versus Ventress, Obi versus Grievous in Revenge of the Sith or like, or no, Obi versus Obi and Anakin versus Dooku in Revenge of the Sith, Obi Wan versus Grievous in Revenge of the Sith, Battle of the Heroes, Showdown with Maul, and then you get to live Obi Wan sacrificing himself against Vader. Then you do all of that, and you get to relive that those moments. You get to be in Obi Wan Kenobi's boots for those fights, and get to see them recreated, and you know, like, be the master of Sarisu that he is, and you know, live that moment. Do the same thing with Anakin. And then, you know, by the end of the Anakin campaign, then you unlock the Vader campaign. Do all of this really fun stuff. And you can, you know, there are some characters that you could explore more time with. Like to see some side Anakin without being freaking, I don't want dark side crispy Anakin. I want, you know, dark side, you know, like uh, still bloody Anakin, you know? Yeah. No. Yeah. And there's a lot you can do. And, you know, we, we it's come up before. Mike, you've mentioned it in previous episodes. Connor, you mentioned it today. You know, Star Wars Infinities is something that all of us have this very fond memory of, of these really weird what-if scenarios. Mm. 
And they were great. They were awesome. I have fond memories of them. I just know they exist. Well, still, yeah. No, yeah. No. I could probably lend you, if you ever come out here, I'll, like, lend you my omnibus book. And, like, yeah. Cool. I think... Yeah, I'm, 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 sorry. I'm coming out they, one of these They only ever did four, five, and six. They need to do the rest of the do one, two, and three, and seven, eight, and nine. That'd be really they should do, yeah, should, they should do one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, and then, like, Clone Wars, Rebels. They just, uh, like, honestly, like, they, they could make so much damn Go nuts, money. man. You know? Oh, it's free money. That kind of stuff is free yeah. money. Yeah, and people would buy it. <laughs> and I, that was another thing, is that I think uh, you, what you could really do, um, and this is kind of based off of the Revenge of the Sith video game that famously uh, has that alternate ending where Anakin kills Obi Wan. Me. Yeah, that. <laughs> Imagine that, but there's now a whole other game mode dedicated to these what if scenarios. That'd be so cool. Where I, like, I, 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 yeah. And you can unlock like the alternate versions of certain characters. Like, okay. Luke turns to the dark side and the Empire Strikes Back. Now you've unlocked a version of Luke that is Dark Inquisitor Luke. Mm -hmm. Or, you mm -hmm. know, Rey falls to the dark side. Now you get Empress Palpatine with, like, the, you know, mm -hmm. hinged saber staff. And, mm -hmm. you know, or in, in my opinion, Rey turns to the dark side. That means Kylo is going to just quadruple down on the dark side and, you know fall further into that hell hole, then you can do like Emperor Ren. And, you know, like, okay, we see how like over the top and metal Kylo's outfit was in the, in uh, the rise of Skywalker. Let's take that up a couple notches and just make it the edgiest shit ever. Cause it's a fighting game. And that's what we're here for. Red kill Palpatine and their Empress. Bro, and Emperor Ren. They just gone and killed Supreme leader Snoke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that would be elevator pitch number one for me. Um, yeah. Because I... I, I, I still I, only number one? I've had a lot of time to think about this. <laughs> Alexis, the dark side of the Force is a pathway to That's many abilities only considered to be, to be unnatural. unnatural. So, <laughs> as you can see, we are all on the dark side. Well, most of us... <laughs> Are on the dark side of the force. Um, I hope I'm not. No, no, you're still holding on. Let go. Nah, I fam. You, you, you didn't. You didn't scream that, Mike. And I'm, that's not me telling you to. I'm just oh, saying that line only works when you scream it, Michael. Do not. What the hell? Oh. <laughs> Dude, some of the Demiers, dude. That was loud. Why did you do that? That was you. You invited that. You invited him with that comment to me. You invited the Demiers to discipline you. I don't yeah. know whose phone went off, but never again. That wasn't um, mine. Who was, was that? No, nah, I have no that. idea whose phone that was that went off. It wasn't. Okay, so my phone's connected to my, uh, my MacBook. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get my messages on my Mac computer. Book Nation. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah, well, it's funny that some people have Macs, and then it's like when you go to an IT person at college, they're like, oh, you have a Mac. It's like, I feel so sorry for you. It's like, what? I'm not like some damn <laughs> refugee or something. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure something out. They're like, well, you know, if you didn't have this unfortunate Mac, maybe I could help you, but terrible I'm really sorry it's like screw off I, i'm sorry I, I had to go on that i i, I, I hello macbook i've been oppressed because i'm a mac user <laughs> and i'm sick of it anyway yeah nice to know we've got some more macs out there i love mine yeah it's great. i was told i was told to get one and i was like yes, okay fine i'll do it Don't i literally just that. needed a computer that wasn't a dinosaur and so i went with this one. yeah i had a, an old ass although tail. alexis i don't okay so really really quick y'all are killing me to the two, <laughs> elevator i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> do you ever have do you have this problem of where your audio just stops randomly and you have and you don't know how to fix it because I've had that as of late, and I don't know how to fix it, but we'll talk about it after the show, after this episode ends. Sorry. Go ahead, Jared. It's your two <laughs> elevator pitches. I love you all. Um, I know. So, I piss off. I My other elevator <laughs> pitch 
And Mike, you and I are kind of like on the same wavelength here with talking about more legend stuff. Okay. Yeah. Again, here's a license to print money. Did someone say, Dyad. <laughs> um. So you guys know how like Warner Brothers in DC famously will do animated movies of classic comic book arcs. Oh, uh, okay. That's not where I thought that was going. No, we'll be talking all about the Snyder Cut on Monday on the Nerd Academy. Don't you worry. Uh, but. License to print money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Animated movie adaptations of legend stories. Ugh. In what? Ugh. Or in what? In what? Uh, no, okay. Sort of animation. Uh, I think that is. Uh, that's a good question. I don't. I, I since it's Disney, I think you could get what away with. I Galaxies think they could, of Adventures animation. Uh, no, I think Galaxy of Adventures is so good because it's meant to like take something everybody is familiar with to the nth degree. And I think people would want something that is meant to be interpreted a little bit more literally. Uh, so I would probably say, like, maybe Clone Wars animation. Go now, with that. Like, all right, I have to go on, like, a rant. So that's that would be cool if they did that. But the thing is, like, with a story like Legacy, Star Wars Legacy, it, it's very... Now, again, I'm always going back to how my one professor said, Star Wars is never black and... It's always black and white. It never deals with anything other than that. It never deals with complex problems. And I, I, didn't, I didn't say anything in the class. But anyway, like, Legacy deals with all sorts of stuff. Like, like you've got, you know, drug addiction, depression, guilt, sexuality, civil war, family issues, all this stuff. So it would be really interesting to see an adaptation of that on screen in an animated format. And the, the nice thing about Legacy is it already deals with those issues. Like, whoever did the killing joke, like, they kind of shoved some stuff into that story to make it more, like, interesting to people. Like, with Legacy, you don't even have to do that because it already deals with those issues. Yeah, that's, that's what I'd say. I, I am so disappointed Alexis stepped away and wasn't able to hear you uh, start dunking on the killing joke because uh, to hell with that. I hated that animation. Oh, God, I don't... <laughs> Fun to see Mark... The only reason I really watched was Mark Hamill just doing... Oh, the... you do just want to hear Mark Hamill read <laughs> Joker and Killing Joke. That's all anybody's there for. Yeah, um, then, yeah. But no, I think that would be a great place to... Cause, and here's my thing, and I, I will reiterate this point once Alexis uh, makes her way back over into the call, but, you know, I mean, Joel even can vouch for this. You know, we got super hooked in Legends and the old canon at a very early age. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, we, well, have, we have all the time in the world that we had to kind of get a leg up on other people who weren't as familiar with this content. Mm -hmm. And because so much of it is, you know, based in these long-running comic book series and series of novels that, you know, aren't necessarily easy to find a lot of the time. Yeah. And, you know, or kind of time consuming to really get down and like read an entire novel. And like, you know, it, it, it gets kind of cynical to say, but like that's not necessarily something every, everybody has time for. Right. Yeah. Like, because like everybody has their own thing they like to do. Like when I was a kid, I loved to read comic. I loved to read these comic books. Like that was my that was my thing, I'd say. Yeah. And, you know, there there's something to be said for the fact that since it's not immediate canon material, there's even less of an incentive to read some of the older stuff. Um, which is unfortunate, but it's true. Yeah. Now, let's make an animated movie. Like, sit down, watch two hours and some change of... Watch Quin the, the good Quinlan Voss stuff. Not the not the new weird... But You, you know, know well, I, not even that. I, and I, my, I, and I, I don't... Well, Prentice, so I don't know all about that. I just, what I know of it, I'm just with, I think it's silly. Well, and he, here's my thing, is that, like... I don't, that's my one, that's the one thing I wouldn't want, that, that scares me about, like, ever seeing this come to fruition, is that, like, I really don't want it to turn into, oh, look at back when Star Wars was good. I really don't want it to turn into that. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying show a good story. No, I agree. With, yeah, I, I know if that's not what that, you mean. We would become, yeah. 
if we did that, Jared, we would become the very thing we swore to destroy. Exactly. And I, I know that's not what you mean by that, Mike. I'm just saying in general, like that would kind of start to crop up inevitably because of, you know, the not my Star Wars crowd. Um, but I, I do think it would, you know, it'd be a license to print money. Uh, yeah, like maybe maybe Star Wars needs to change in that, like, it seemed like for a while, like, and I was in this camp and part of me still is, like, I just don't want all this complexity. I don't want, I didn't want the Star Wars to go the Marvel and the DC route where there's like 20,000 different storylines, which I think in some ways I can kind of just diminish everything's importance. You know, but maybe in some ways if Star Wars did something like that, like by publishing new material under Legends, maybe they could, maybe it could appease people in different camps. But anyway, well, that's yeah. my thing is that like I don't ever want it to be about appeasement. You know, like and that and that's okay. my biggest issue is that I want it to come from a place of here is a story that we know people like. It's not about trying to make certain crowds happy. It's about we are going. We know this will make people happy, so we will do it. We are not going to engineer happiness. And like I was saying, and you know, now the Lexus is, you know, uh, back. Like I think that this, like, like somebody like Alexis, who never really had the opportunity or time to get super uh, entrenched in legends, animating these stories and like putting them in a movie format makes it so much more digestible. You could, you know, I, I think that would be a boon. For so yeah. many people who love Star yeah. Wars but didn't get the chance to go all in on those older stories. And, like, you know, just you can almost tell it, like, basically word for word, but also kind of like what Connor is saying. Like, of course, he had to take certain liberties, but. Yeah, it happens yeah. with any adaptation, you know, like that. That's just the. That's just the dangers of taking something from. With the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the greatest movie trilogy ever. I guess, I guess like what you were saying earlier, Connor, was like... Kind Excuse of, I think me? You're like beyond what Jared's saying, I think. It seems like... It seems like you guys have very similar-ish ideas, but Connor's is a little bit like... It's like... I mean, I guess it's... Connor's talking about new content, middle-of-the-road stuff, but Jared's talking about ad adapting already existing stuff. So it's interesting, these different ideas. Yeah, and I, I just I just think it's an easier... It's a way to get this stuff more streamlined. You know, like, yeah. I can't... I, I can't honestly you know look like again like look at somebody like joel or alexis who like love star wars i cannot mm -hmm. look them in the eyes and be like okay now go play the 50 hour campaign of knights of the old republic a game that is so old and a product of its time that by today's standards it's kind of fucking unplayable mm. You know, like, please go do that. Go do that so you can come back to me 50 hours later so that yeah. we can have an in-depth conversation about Darth Revan. Or right. you split that up into three animated movies. Right. You know, I think it would and be a you... license to print money and you, you give people an easier way to digest older, amazing stories. Yeah, because it's like... I, I don't know, Like, I wonder about the Marvel movies. How much really for us or how much are they for the the kids who grew up in like the 80s and 70s who were reading these comic books and now that they're like middle-aged adults they can kind of sit back and enjoy the fruition of their childhood interests i don't know if that was, i don't know if we'd ever have that with star wars but i don't know i mean that's how i am with the mcu yeah you I mean, know even, like, yeah. i i grew up reading those comics and feel incredibly seen by a lot of the stuff that the MCU does. Yeah. Um, I so, no, yeah. Star Wars that. I think that's kind of like what we're describing. Yeah. Um, I'd be curious. No, I, I agree with you. And I do want to see, you know, the continued genesis of the Star Wars fan as time goes on. Uh, so my last elevator pitch, it's kind of like an elevator pitch and a half, uh, kind of in the way that whenever Master and Apprentice came out, Dooku Jedi Lost was kind of a companion piece to it. Hmm. I want a comic or novel or however you want to do it. Uh, and I legitimately want feedback on this one because I think this would be a lot of fun. I want in exact detail what happened with Anakin in the Jedi Temple. I want, I, mean, like when he's... I want Operation Nightfall. Like, literally, uh -oh. you can just uh -oh. call the novel Star Wars Nightfall. Cool. 
and page one is marching into the temple and go from there. Like that would be, I think an incredible study of Anakin's character and Alexis, it kind of ties back into what you were saying. Like you do not get any more early Vader than him stepping foot in the Jedi temple with the intent to take countless lives. Mm -hmm. And I would love to get in that horrible place. Like, again, that is what makes Anakin's fall so complex and canon is that you have this guy, this who for the most part is this really sweet, happy go lucky guy who has these moments of horrific violence that he is capable of. What happens in Anakin's head when he has to flip that switch on people that he knows? I, I'm sorry. I have to disagree. He was always a whiny bitch. He was never happy go lucky. He was always a, domineering angsty little boy Sorry, in legends but in I, legends and yeah. in canon and in clone wars he is way more leveled out and isn't as much of you know doesn't scream school shooter as much as he does in legends <laughs> so are, wait are you saying that you think in the canon in the current canon he is he's more normal he's more, more normal rounded. more well-rounded i'm not saying that he is well-rounded I'm saying that Anakin Skywalker passes for a functioning human being way better in canon than he does in Legends. Okay. Which, in my right. opinion, makes his fall more tragic. Uh, and now, but can't you see then why I would think that, like, okay, so like when, you know, between two and three, we see that, you know, he's gone from being like a whiny bitch in two to being a skilled whiny bitch in three. Don't you see why I was once against, and part of me still is against the idea of Ahsoka. Like, you can't give this guy a Padawan. That just makes no sense. But, of course, when you have Anakin change for the Clone Wars TV show, it makes more sense then. Because he's he's more like a, he's a, you know, he he's like a, in the Clone Wars movie, he was like, like, a, like a senior in college, you know? Like, he figured stuff out. He was kind of, still has issues, but... Well, no. he, here's my here's my pushback on that is that Anakin again trying to square the Clone Wars TV show with Anakin of Legends is damn near impossible. But I'm saying that I think it's impossible to square Anakin of the Clone Wars TV show with Anakin of movies. I think they're they're different people. I think you see enough of Anakin not being a sociopath that <laughs> like. It's believable that he's leveled out. And again, that's why, like, it, he seems so weird in the movies. Is it like, how did you not know this guy was going to kill thousands of people the way he's behaving? So the fact that the show is like, look how much of a sweetheart, funny, nice guy he is. Murder. But, like, the murder is nowhere near as common a thing. Like, in Legends, like... You couldn't go more than three comic book issues without Anakin brutally murdering somebody. Yeah, that, that's fair. So yeah, that, like, like, with Asajj Ventress and, like, the... I mean, he was pretty responsible with the Rendilli. Or, I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, yeah. But I I, I still think, though, he... it this whole The whole Clone Wars TV show was kind of built on a lie that, like... Like I said, he was an angsty bitch in two, and he's an angsty bitch in three. In the begin, in the middle, he's like some good guy. Like that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. Well, I really don't like. I I mean, and I'm I'm being completely honest with you. I don't even think calling him an angsty bitch is valid. Like you know, yeah, he's whiny and angry, but like again, most of the villains of the Star Wars universe are born of some really profound trauma. You know, right. Like, he has that separation anxiety with his mother and, yeah. you know, lost what he thought would be his surrogate father within but, days yeah. of meeting him. And that, you know, like, you have all these things that fucked Anakin up and he doesn't know yeah. how to process all of that. Right. I'm not saying that him being a, like what I just said, a whiny bitch is his fault. I'm just saying that's what he is. It's fatness. That's his nature. And I just don't get why, you know, you get like, it's like dark, white, dark with those movies and the Clone Wars put in between them. That's what I don't get. But I mean, and that's fair. I just, for me personally, I would like to see, you know, with Anakin yeah. in the temple, like him uh, finally yeah. indulging in those violent impulses. 
Right. You know, like yeah. you can really see, you know, again, like in Clone Wars, like the, the amount of times that like he just kind of cuts loose and lets that right. power get to his head. You know, what right. happens when he's a in a situation that he knows is wrong, but for him to survive that situation, he has to give himself over to that power because yeah. one Jedi Knight cannot take on an entire temple full of Jedi unless you are on some type of amp from the force. And it just happens to be that anger, that hatred, that angst that will give him the fuel to be able to cut down how many countless Jedi. Right. And I think that would be an, a fascinating and dark and upsetting story on its own. And the companion piece that you release aside of it is the like an actual printed complete version of the story that Palpatine tells the galaxy. Mm. Hmm. And that it, you, you just get this falsified version of the history of what happened. Like you get Palpatine's version of what happened with Mace Windu, Palpatine's version of everything that you know makes the galaxy think that the Jedi are these horrible, treacherous monsters. Mm -hmm. Like, like what like I want to read Palpatine's lie. Yeah, that'd be cool. And I think that would be so fascinating to like, you know, read this, you know, Palpatine's harrowing story about being attacked by the Jedi right after you got done reading about Anakin horrifically murdering them in yeah, their own that's... home. I think it would be a very fascinating story. I think one of the things about that era, about the dark times, um, is just how dark and hopeless that era was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you have stories like Rebels and Fallen Order that, you know, inherently tell a story that is very hopeful. And not that there's anything wrong with telling a story about a candle in the darkness. You know, that, that, that that's what Star Wars is. Mm -hmm. It's about hope. Yeah, it's about hope. I think that stories like this enhance what that hope is fighting for. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, where like you get into the absolute darkest, most base place in the galaxy. And, and it kind you, of like, yeah. And, and you, like, like piggyback or you're saying, yeah. So no, continue, Mike. I'm sorry that the delay is kicking our asses. Oh, you're good. Like to piggyback off be interesting. Maybe if while he's like, you know, taking people down the temple, we might see flashbacks like of his experiences as a kid in the temple. But furthermore, I think more importantly, and this is like what I really want to see. Like I want to see, I want some sort of novel just showing how much Obi-Wan failed him, how he failed Anakin and sort of the point how like their, their relationship, it, I think it was, it was probably the will of the force, but Obi-Wan, you know, like Qui-Gon, if Qui-Gon was there, it wouldn't have happened. No, I completely agree. That, that is a podcast episode on its own. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I liked what you mentioned, uh, Joel earlier about Qui-Gon because like that one of the best things about Qui-Gon, I think he, he's, I think he's truly a better Jedi than the Jedi in some ways. Like he knows how to just sort of follow the living force and not one of the most. Yeah, I'd agree with that. He, like wholeheartedly. He's not. Too, he the thing. I haven't even enough, studied Qui-Gon that time. much. Huh? Here's the thing, I haven't studied Qui-Gon that much as, in terms of a Jedi, but, like, I know he's up there. I will do it, I must still be one. Like, that, ugh. Well, God. hey, hey, the quote our friends from the Bombad cast, Qui-Gon Jinn is the best Jedi to ever Jedi. Or, no, he's the most Jedi to ever Jedi in the history of the Jedi. That's accurate. Um, yep. Now, with that, uh... We are going to toss you Yoda's guys bureaucrat. over. What would you say, Mike? Yoda's the bureaucrat. Now that I think about him more and more, he just, he kind of, anyway, continue. No, Sorry. no, Yoda sucks. You're absolutely right. Uh, we are going to toss things over to uh, Spence the Mandalorian birthday boy so he can give you his thoughts. 
Hello everyone, it is me, Spence the Mando Simpson. Uh, once again, I cannot come on to the show, uh, which is a disappointment to me, but um, the day that we are recording this is actually my birthday, so I'm hanging out with my family. So um, hopefully I'll be on next week, and I'm sorry that I missed you all, but uh, I did want to weigh in on uh, some Star Wars stories that we would really love to be told uh, in a video game or on screen. Um, most of mine are going to be animated because of both the time period and where it would fit, but also because I think um, it's often easier to do it and make it look really sharp when it is animated in a Clone Wars um, sort of way. So Jared told me to think up uh, two or three. I thought of two um, stories that I would really like to see. Um, so I'll go ahead and jump in. For those of you who have been around me, you know that I am a... Um, a hoe for Old Republic stuff, particularly that which pertains to Malgus. Um, I, at least once a month, watch through the uh, Star Wars Old Republic cinematics that you can find on YouTube that outline a lot of the stuff that Malgus did, um, but I love Malgus content. And so I would love to see um, on an animated screen, maybe as like a, you know, a Clone Wars style special, um, I would love to see the um i think it's andron the there's the, there's a siege in the in the um the 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 sith book the book of the book of sith excuse me which is the opposite component to the jedi path which you can find at barnes and noble or anywhere there's a section of book of sith that is a um campaign journal that malgus wrote and i'm trying to I'm failing to remember the name of the planet, but um, something like that, just like an Old Republic style um, Jedi versus Sith siege or battle campaign. Something like even if you fit it into like an hour long miniseries or a movie or something in a Clone Wars, you know, sort of animation style, I think that would look really sharp and I'd love to see that. Um, Second, and my only other one, is I liked reading in the old visual guides and stuff about um, the Battle of Galadran, uh, at which um, a contingent of Mandalorians fought against some Jedi, and I think this was thrown out the window um, when Disney took over. This is no longer um, canon, but I liked seeing the pictures for, and there's a comic, um, I think, out there about this, but I loved seeing that kind of stuff in the old visual dictionaries and seeing like Mandalorians who are my favorite, you know, blaster wielding uh, characters in Star Wars. And then on the other side of a battlefield, seeing some, some Jedi. And I especially like the idea that in this battle, um, Master Dooku was on one side and uh, the true Mandalorians uh, with Jango Fett were on the other, and so that's kind of like where um, Dooku first got the idea of using a Mandalorian, or even more specifically using Jango Fett for the clone template. Um, but I think that would be, I think this would fit in really well as like um, a Lost Missions kind of thing like we saw in Season 6 of The Clone Wars, just random stories, one or two episodes apiece. I think it would be cool to really dig into the backstory of how Dooku and Jango met, especially since, as far as we know, um, the Battle of Galadran is no longer uh, canon. So... Those are my two um, takes of things I'd like to see on the screen. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Drop me a DM uh, at Spenceman Cosplays on Instagram or on Twitter at Spenceman49. But that's all I got for you this day. Uh, this day, sorry. Today. That's all I have for you today. Back to you, Jared, and everybody else. Peace. All right. Thank you to Spence the Mando. Another happy birthday to the boy, to the kid. Uh, there is a bar crawl with all of our names on it once the Rona has abated. Uh, with that, that'll bring us to the end of this week's show. Joel, where can the lovely people find you? Well, I suppose I could put the new Twitter on, huh? Yes, you can. You can plug that new Twitter. Because I was coerced into getting... 
another Twitter. You seem uh, like you're anyway, enjoying Twitter, though. You seem like you're having a good I, I'm time. I'm trying to enjoy it. Anyways, you can find me at J the Sentinel on Twitter and Bass and Bacon Cosplay on Instagram. Excellent. Connor, where can the lovely people find you? The lovely people can find me on Twitter at Depp of Banana. They can find me on Instagram at ConmanJFO. And they can find me on Facebook, admin in the Alliance of Star Wars Fanatics, where our entire group mission and philosophy is to talk about Star Wars constructively, respectfully, and positively. Very antithetical to how most of the Star Wars fandom works, generally speaking. Talking about Star Wars in a way where you're not harassing other people and calling them names? I won't have it, Connor. (laughs) <laughs> unheard of i don't know where you get of. your delusions laser brain <laughs> don't, okay listen listen they do not do not no i will not accept laser brain i will not accept this defamation on the show you stuck up half-witted <laughs> gruffy looking nerf herder I'll, I'll see you in court it's gonna be the last episode isn't it I, i'll Oof. see you in court Mike, where can the lovely people find you, my friend? You can find me on Darthid415 on, uh, what is it? Twitter. Yeah, I'm sorry. And on Instagram at MikerDurling45 and Mike Doling on Facebook. Absolutely. And Alexis, where can the lovely people find you on the interwebs? Well, Instagram is at acapella98. And Twitter is LexiLion98. And Facebook is Alexis Capel, C-A-P-E-L. Yes, Alexis Capel. You can find her right there. That is incorrect, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's on, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, Han. Um, uh, oh, I love that. Alexis, oh, wait. I got, I got a notification that a special guest would like to welcome you into the team. Officially. Stop! Move away from the cookie jar! Alright, there we go. There we go. I know how much you hate hate Cookie Cup. The Lord has spoken. That is the cringiest thing about all of this. Listen, (laughs) no, it's not, actually. That's the most beautiful thing out of all of this. Listen, Cookie Cup. Listen, we got we got Cookie Cup in the divorce, and that means we were leaning into this bit even harder than ever. Um, But you know what I'm saying? About is that when we get big, we're gonna have to pay royalties to the company that makes those damn things. I don't even think yeah. that company exists anymore because it's sixty three dollars to get one of these on Amazon. Really? Well, so I'm pretty right. sure these are no longer in production, which okay. means that we have a relic of the past on our hands. <laughs> From a more civilized age. From a more civilized age. <laughs> I would like all of our ashes all at once to be in cookie cups. <laughs> No, 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 no. I want to go out. I want to go out the way of the big Lebowski. Have my ashes be in a Folgers jar. <laughs> and spread out onto the ocean. When I watched that movie and I saw that scene, I was like, I know how I'm going to go out. Goodbye, sweet prince. Yeah, no, no, we're all going in Cookie Cup. Lexus is right. That That's how it's happening now. You guys can find me on. What was that? No. Oh, okay. I thought you Don't said worry something. about it. I hate I hate doing this on Discord. I can't take this anymore. The lag is getting to my head. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dark Jedi twenty five fifty two, and you can find the Nerd Academy podcast on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, be sure to check out our website www.thenerdacademypodcast.com, where if you're feeling generous, you can chuck in a couple credits into our Patreon and help us keep the lights on around here. Uh, while you're over there, uh, down, man. yep, the Empire is taxing us hard. We really don't want to have to start selling Death Sticks to get by, but that might be but, but, what we have to do. I've already started. The late I've already started. Party. What'd you say? <laughs> <What'd> you... <laughs> That's terrible, Mike. That is not we even funny. Raiders, and we sneak onto Imperial ships. <laughs> um, yeah, and while you guys are on the website, we actually published our first article. Uh, I wrote a piece about the uh, recent developments about the Snyder Cut. 
Uh, and of course, tune in on Monday for the Nerd Academy podcast where uh, Spencer, Joel, Travis, myself, and uh, whomever else from the team wants to go down that rabbit hole uh, will be joining us for some Snyder Cut talk. Uh, very long time coming with that development. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, we are honored that you have joined us and may the force be with you always.